good morning, beautiful rainy Friday morning at that. What do you all do when it's a day like this? Comment below, let me know. I work outdoors on roofs, roofing company, and uh, days like this, just not safe. I can't, some stuff like, you know, obviously we're not gonna tear off a roof in this. It's nasty or calm for two to five inches of rain in our area. So, I don't know, what do you do? Do you sleep in? Do you still work? Do you try to grind, get your grind on and try to get ahead? I'm just wondering, but today I'm, I'm going to do something a little different. Hey, check this out. Kokomo Airport. It's one of the airports I learned how to fly at a long time ago. I think it was a lifetime ago. Pretty nice place. Anyway, I'm going to do something a little different here, and I'm on the way to... Uh, a manufacturer I just started working with here recently. Checked out their place last week, heard about them in the new, new in town, just about 15 minutes away from my house. So I uh, checked with them if they cared if I shot some footage of it. They, they were cool with it. So, pretty cool operation to see how that steel gets rolled and formed and made up. All the accessories and everything there. It's uh, Waggler Steel, steel Sales. Uh, we just, I think it's north. Northeast of Kokomo near Wampicon, Indiana. But uh, stick around and check it out. Alright, so we're getting close. Here's Wampicon. Don't blink or you'll miss it. That's about it. State Road 18, four way stop sign. We're about uh, I don't know, maybe two miles or less away. All right, I have a correction to make. It is Waggler Metal Sales. Here we are, pulling up here. Waggler Metal Sales, metal roofing and siding manufacturer. Well, let's go check them out. I was here the other day and met uh, David here. I know he messaged me this morning and said he's going to be out all day. So uh, when I met with him, I gave him my initial order here, and he figured the quote and all. So his brother is out here, Glenn, working. He's supposed to be getting our stuff going throughout the day. Let's see what they got. So when the orders come in, they'll send them out to Glenn. And he had said he's working on something. We'll be running our order here soon. So when he took me around the other day, basically the... The raw materials come in by truck. We had to actually wait for ours. They didn't have the color we wanted. I imagine they store it back here. Right here's their, their brake. That's what I call it anyway. <laughs> Blows my brake away. I got this little itty bitty 10 foot brake and it, it works, but man, this thing is awesome. He's uh, supposed to be running a couple of pieces for a customer. So I asked him, it's, uh, he's gonna run it here and show you how that works. They have already custom made pieces in the computer system, so they choose it and it'll run it. Or you can custom measure what uh, what you're needing. So whatever bends you need on your building or project, you can measure it precisely, let them know, and they will bend it exactly to that. It's pretty cool. Uh, I think he's getting coil out for the parts he's making. pulling the taupe steel coil that just came in for our job. It's going out for some siding. I just asked him a minute ago off camera and he said it was just shy of 10,000 pounds for a roll that size. Uh, I think he said 41 inches long or, or wide and uh, what do you say 4,500 feet long. He's going to load it on the machine here for us and get ours running. Big roll of steel. So the color is taupe and it's got a different texture. I've, I've not seen this type of texture until they told me about it last week when I met them. They call it crinkle and uh, kind of like it. 
in my opinion, it doesn't shine so much in the light or reflect. It just kind of gives it more of a matte look, and it's pretty sweet. So they'll throw it on the spindle, and I imagine that feeds and counts out how many feet are going into the machine. It'll come into here like a little cutter head in there. It'll come down and chop the metal. Conveyor carries it up into the die, the former, where it rolls it. heavy as our typical average shingle job trash going to the landfill is. Uh, 14 foot long, 8 foot wide, probably 3 to 4 feet tall. We sometimes go about 6 ton in the 6 ton trailer. That one roll is pretty close to that weight. Pull it, oh, the bar. Okay. Gotcha. So there's a switch in the bar. Okay. So as the machine pulls where it's, the supply is, if that doesn't spin, the bar raises and pulls the slack out, which turns the switch on to feed the machine again. Pretty neat little setup. And I imagine it goes through, he'll cut it, and I imagine that's where it starts counting the length, the linear footage. So the roller here's what counts the feet. So you'll zero it out by shearing it. Yeah. And this is the first wrap, so always, the first wrap is always damaged, so it's going okay. to cover sheet out of it. So what, uh, the circumference or what? Oh yeah, you see a damage piece right there. Some blemishes and marks. <clears throat> told me that there's a, a second track up top they can put another die in to do a different uh, shape of steel I imagine or in this case what he did a, a little bit ago is just sent the coil above to a cart over over there so it wasn't actually being formed it was going to another process in the brake over there so rolling out one full loop of the coil cut it and throw it out As soon as he gets past the damage part, he'll zero it out and cut that off with the shear. Yeah, you don't want to get caught in that thing. You guys use that for like a cover sheet then? So you don't waste it. Yeah, I saw that there. So what was it that stabbed that? Just shipping or something. So I'll take you down here and this will uh, be an, a wasted piece of material they're going to run and bend to use as a, uh, a cover sheet or a bottom sheet so when they put the actual finished product on it, the forks, nothing in it. The rest of the shipping process will damage it. Yep. There's a close up of the die. Well, I guess I call it a die former roller, I don't know. 
the uh, raw material comes in from the other side of the machine. If you look at the top part here, you're like, well, how does that make the rib? It's actually formed in between these two pieces, so the panel is laying in between there, and it will start bending through. So if you look at the light shining through, that's the shape the panel will be. One other thing I didn't point out before is it's got the full ribs made, starting from the center out. You can see right here those little bitty ribs. So once this rib is made, then it can pull these sets of little ribs in. Then it forms the next set of rib, and notice that's flat because you can't bend anything out because the material has to travel in. Every time it forms something, it's got to travel further. So it's needing more material, and the material is pulling in towards that. If you were to start on the outsides and then bend inward, it would just destroy it or buckle it or something. The uh, little ribs are getting formed by these. So this is the opposite of the shape because it's the die underneath that's bringing the rib up. So right there, it's what's going to be created here when it finishes running through this die. He's adjusting something, so this is a perfect time to show. Now I got a better view, standing on a bucket, looking over the machine. So, is the panel is being bent? This rib. To take that distance up, because now your metal has to travel a further distance, it's pulling metal in this way. So when you get to your next rib to be bent, because you got to start from the center and work your way out, here's one of the fourth or fifth dies, ribs to be bent. It forms one end on the inside and the material travels in. So there's the first die in this stage for that rib. The second die, there's this little bump right here, that is forming this guy right here. So then the third die starts doing that little bump here. Again, that would be the opposite side. Well, this one here is this one. That die there is doing this one. And then it starts with those other three wheels, dies, finishing the form coming down. And it will bend here. So first die, you can see just a little bitty bend and shape happening and it will continue on to do more. So he's going to run this slowly for me on the last one. Or Okay, so you can see right now, it's flat right there. It's coming through. It's got a little bend. It goes through this die right here. We'll have another little bump. goes into this one. Now it's got the top made. You can see it better over there. And there's a rack to my left, so I can't go any further but then it hits the last die, and at that point it's fully formed, making its way out the back end of the machine. Thank you. That slow, uh, slow right there, you can see it a lot better. Thanks, Glenn. Yep, go for it. We're going to run at full speed.
your gear rolling through. So it's counting how far the panel is. The shear will cut it to the proper length. And then it goes on down. Starts hitting all the dies to make all the actual bends to the metal. And the first center rib and work its way outward. Start with the longest panel first so it starts stacking upward easy. They'll be able to shove a fork truck under it, load a trailer, and head it out to the job. We get to the job site, we know what the uh, purchase order, back to slip, all the panels, the legs, we'll pull them off from the designated side of the job and start installing the material. So, making the rat guard, fits it out the length it needs, and it's going to shear it. It's going to take that full 41 inch piece and cut it down so you got a bunch of slivers uh, that size. And four and a quarter, four and a quarter inches. So when it's all cut down, he's got a bunch of strips at four and a quarter inches. He'll then one by one feed them into the machine and it will bend the rat guard out of it. So basically what this is doing, you could set this thing too on a 41 inch wide piece of metal, set all those scissors to it, just run one sheet through and it cuts them all into little slivers. I think my little poor cell phone is being overworked. There we go, I think it's recording now. So he's feeding one by one these little slivers in, whatever the measurement was. Then it's bringing a little hem over and starts bending the pieces. So that is the rat guard. It's called rat guard, right? Rat guard, yeah. Okay. So it'll fasten to the wall in this case, right here. Base trim. Base trim, okay. And this gives you a flat edge for your steel panel to rest on, as well as blocking the ribs from any critters coming up under. And then that'll hang down for water to drip off of. They still got to do all the corners, inside corners, outside corners. And I'm sure we'll probably have a few custom pieces to do afterwards. Before you order your next roofing job, that's a steel, steel roofing job, materials or siding, definitely give them a call up here at Waggler Metal Sales. Give them a call, stop in, check out their webpage. I personally highly recommend them. This job that was just filmed was a job for me going out.